So you've landed an Intune interview. First of all, congrats. That's a big deal. But now comes the preparation part, and that can be a little daunting, right? You've probably memorized the definitions and the basic functions, but in the real world, it's all about how you apply that knowledge. Hiring managers want to see how you think on your feet, how you solve problems, and how you handle the curveballs that come with managing a fleet of devices. This is where scenario-based questions come into play, and they are the true test of your skills. That's exactly what we're diving into today. This video is designed to be your ultimate guide for tackling those tough, practical, in-tune interview questions. We're not just going over theory. We're breaking down 10 of the most common and challenging scenarios you're likely to face. I'll walk you through the thought process, the steps to take, and the key details that will make your answers stand out. The goal here is to help you walk into that interview room feeling confident and prepared for whatever they throw at you. So, I'd suggest grabbing a notepad, opening up a doc, or whatever you use to take notes, because you're going to want to remember this stuff. We're going to cover everything from troubleshooting policy failures, to handling device wipes, and securing BYOD environments. By the end of this, you'll have a solid framework for answering these questions like a pro, Think of this as your personal coaching session for that next big career move. Let's get into it. All right, first up, a classic. The interviewer says, a user reports their device isn't getting the latest Intune policies you pushed out. What do you do? This is a fundamental test of your troubleshooting methodology. The first thing I do is resist the urge to jump straight to the most complex solution. Start simple. My first step is always to ask the user to manually sync their device. You'd be surprised how often this resolves the issue. Go to Settings, Accounts, Access Work or School and hit Sync. If that doesn't work, my next move is to verify the policy assignment in the Intune portal. Is the user or device actually in the group that the policy is assigned to? It sounds basic, but assignment errors are super common. If the assignment is correct and a manual sync did nothing, it's time to dig a little deeper. Now I'm checking the device's status in the Intune portal. I'm looking for the last check-in time. If it hasn't checked in for a while, we might have a connectivity issue on the device itself. Is it connected to Wi-Fi or cellular? Is there a firewall blocking communication? If the device is checking in but still not getting the policy, I'm going to look at the policy deployment status for that specific device. Intune will often give you an error code or a status like pending or error, which is my next clue. This systematic, layered approach shows the interviewer you're methodical and not just guessing. So, the next scenario they might hit you with is about application deployment. You've deployed a critical application to a group of devices, but several are reporting installation failures. How do you handle this? Again, this is about a logical process. My immediate action is to navigate to the app section in the Intune portal and check the deployment status for that specific application. Intune provides detailed monitoring that shows success, in progress, and failure counts. I drill down into the failed list to see which devices are affected, and more importantly, to look for the error codes associated with the failures. These error codes are your best friend. A quick search on that code, often a hexadecimal number, will usually point you directly to the root cause. For example, a common error might indicate that a previous version of the app needs to be uninstalled first, or that there's not enough disk space, or a dependency is missing. Once I have the error code and its meaning, I can start forming a remediation plan. This might involve creating a script to clean up old versions, instructing users to free up space, or packaging the required dependency with the application. The key is to show you know where to look for the error and how to interpret it to solve the problem. Okay, let's talk compliance. The interviewer asks, a user calls the help desk, saying they can't access company email because their device is flagged as non-compliant. What are your steps? This question tests your understanding of a core security feature in Intune. My first move is to pull up that user's device in the Intune portal and go straight to the device compliance section. This screen is the source of truth. It will list all the compliance policies applied to the device and show exactly which setting is failing. It could be anything from the OS version being too old to disk encryption being turned off, or a required app not being installed. Once I've identified the specific reason for non-compliance, the next step is remediation. I'd communicate this to the user. For example, if BitLocker is disabled, I'd guide them on how to enable it. If their OS is out of date, I'll point them to Windows Update. 
Intune can often automate this with grace periods and notifications, but for a one-off issue, direct communication is key. I'd also check the device health status to make sure there aren't underlying issues with the health attestation service. The goal is to not just fix the immediate problem, but to understand why it happened and guide the user through the fix, which demonstrates both technical and soft skills. Managing updates across hundreds or even thousands of devices is honestly a huge responsibility. So, an interviewer might ask, how do you use Intune to manage OS updates for the entire company's fleet of Windows devices? This is your chance to show you can really think at scale. My answer would focus on update rings for Windows 10 and later. I'd explain that I would create multiple rings to stage the rollout. You don't just push a new update to everyone at once. That's honestly a recipe for disaster. So I would start with a test or IT pilot ring. This group gets the updates first. This pilot ring would have a very short deferral period, maybe zero days. So we can test the update as soon as it's available from Microsoft. After we've validated the update on our test devices and confirmed there are no major issues with our core applications, I would then approve it for the next ring, let's call it Broad Pilot. This group might be a set of tech-savvy users from different departments. Finally, after a successful Broad Pilot, I would schedule the update for the Production or All Users ring, maybe with a 7- or 14-day deferral to give us a buffer. I'd also configure active hours to prevent reboots during the workday, and set deadlines to make sure devices are patched in a timely manner. This structured, phased approach really minimizes risk and business disruption. Here's a question about efficiency and planning. Your company just purchased 500 new laptops. How would you enroll them all into Intune with minimal manual effort? The wrong answer here is saying you do them one by one. The key is to talk about zero touch or light touch deployment methods. For Windows devices, the gold standard is Windows Autopilot. I'd explain how I would work with the hardware vendor to get the hardware hashes of the new devices and upload them into the Intune service. This registers the devices to our organization before they're even unboxed. Then I'd create and assign an Autopilot deployment profile. This profile defines the out-of-box experience, or UB, for the user. We can pre-configure settings like skipping the privacy settings, disabling local admin account creation, and setting the user account type. When the user receives the laptop, all they really have to do is connect it to the internet and sign in with their corporate credentials. Autopilot takes over, applies all the policies, installs the apps, and the device is business ready in just a few minutes. For Apple devices, I'd mention the equivalent process using Apple Business Manager and Apple's Device Enrollment Program, or DP, which provides a very similar zero-touch experience. This shows you understand modern, efficient endpoint management. A critical security scenario. A user has left the company. You need to remove all corporate data from their personal mobile phone, which was enrolled in Intune. What do you do? This question is designed to test your understanding of data security and the different types of device wipes. The most important thing to mention here is the distinction between a selective wipe and a full wipe. Since this is a personal device, or BYOD, a full wipe, which factory resets the device, is the absolute wrong choice. That would erase the user's personal photos, contacts, and everything else. It's a huge privacy violation and honestly just a terrible user experience. So the correct action is to perform a selective wipe, also known as a retire action in Intune. I would locate the user's device in the Intune portal and initiate the retiree command. This action removes all the data managed by the organization, including corporate emails, documents stored in OneDrive, and any applications that were deployed via Intune. It also unenrolls the device from management. However, it leaves all personal data completely untouched. I'd also emphasize that this is why having clear BIOD policies from the start is so important, so users understand what data is managed and what happens when they leave the company. This thoughtful answer shows you prioritize both security and user privacy. Building on the last point, here's a common strategic question. How do you use Intune to secure company data on employee-owned devices, or BYOD, without managing the entire device? So, this is where you shift the focus from device management to app management. The answer is Intune App Protection Policies, or APP. 
I'd explain that these policies apply security controls directly to the corporate applications themselves, like Outlook, Teams, and OneDrive, regardless of whether the device itself is enrolled. It's what's called a containerization approach. With app protection policies, I can enforce controls like requiring a pin to open the corporate app, preventing copy-paste from a managed app like Outlook to an unmanaged app like Personal Gmail, and blocking the saving of corporate files to the local device storage. This allows the user to have their personal apps and data on their phone completely untouched and unmanaged, while the corporate data lives inside a secure, encrypted bubble. I'd also mention pairing this with conditional access policies, which can verify that an app has a protection policy applied before it's allowed to access corporate resources. This combination is the modern way to do BYOD, enabling productivity while maintaining a strong security posture. Here's a user-facing problem. A user is having issues with the Intune Company Portal app on their phone. It's crashing or they can't see any available apps. How do you troubleshoot? This is another test of your methodical troubleshooting skills, but focused on the primary user interface for Intune. My first and simplest step would be to ask the user to try the basics, close and reopen the app, and then restart the device. You have to start there. If the issue persists, the next step is often to check for an update to the company portal app itself in the App Store or Play Store. An outdated version can cause all sorts of strange behavior. If that doesn't resolve it, I'd have the user try reinstalling the company portal app completely. This often clears out any corrupted cache or configuration files. If the problem is that they can't see apps they expect to see, I'd go back to the Intune portal and double-check that the apps are actually deployed as available to that user's group. It could be a simple assignment issue. For more persistent issues, I would guide the user on how to access the diagnostic logs within the company portal app and send them to me. These logs contain detailed information that can help Microsoft support or me pinpoint the exact cause of the problem. Now for a heavy hitter in the security space. Explain how you would configure a conditional access policy in Intune to require multi-factor authentication, or MFA, when users access corporate resources from an unmanaged network. This is a big one, testing your knowledge of the broader Microsoft Entra ID ecosystem. My explanation would start by clarifying that conditional access policies are configured in the Microsoft Entra Admin Center, but they work hand-in-hand -hand with Intune for device compliance signals. The policy is built like a sentence. If this happens, then do this. So for this specific scenario, I would break down the policy creation. First, the assignments. I'd select the users or groups this policy applies to. Then the target resources. I'd select the cloud apps I want to protect like Office 365. Next, the conditions. This is the core of the question. I would configure the locations condition to apply the policy to any location, but then exclude my trusted locations which would be my corporate office IP addresses. Finally, under Access Controls in the Grants section, I would select Require Multi-Factor Authentication. I'd also mention the importance of testing this policy first using the Report Only mode to see its impact before enforcing it for everyone. Finally, how do you prove your work is effective? The interviewer asks, how do you monitor and report on the overall health and compliance of your device fleet in Intune? This is about visibility and communication. I'd start by talking about the built-in Intune dashboard, which gives a great at-a-glance overview of device compliance, enrollment status, and policy health. It's the first place I look every morning. For more detailed information, I'd explain my use of the Intune reports section. There, you can generate specific reports on non-compliant devices, see trends over time, and export data for further analysis. But for more advanced reporting and long-term trending, I'd mention leveraging the log analytics integration. I would explain that by sending Intune's diagnostic and activity logs to a log analytics workspace, I can use Custo Query Language or KQL to create custom queries and build powerful interactive dashboards in Azure Workbooks or even Power BI. This allows me to answer very specific questions like which compliance setting fails the most often or show me the compliance trend for the finance department over the last 90 days. I'd also mention setting up alerts. So if the overall compliance percentage drops below a certain threshold, say 95%, I get an automatic notification. This proactive approach shows you're not just managing devices, you're managing the health of the entire endpoint environment. And there you have it. 
10 Common Real-World Scenarios You Might Encounter in Your Next Intune Interview We've covered a lot, from the basics of troubleshooting a single device to the high-level strategy of managing updates and security for an entire organization. The key takeaway for all of these is to have a clear, logical, and systematic approach. Always start simple, gather information, and then escalate your troubleshooting. Thinking out loud and explaining your why is just as important as knowing the what. If you found this guide helpful, definitely hit that subscribe button. I'll be sharing a lot more content like this to help you level up your tech career and ace your interviews. Thank you so much for watching. Now go review your notes, take a deep breath, and walk into that interview with confidence. I'm wishing you the absolute best of luck on your Intune interview. You've got this.